uh, involving solving right triangles. So some problems will involve special triangles, like your 45, 45, 90 triangles, and your 30, 60, 90 triangles, and we'll use those properties. But then other problems will involve tangent, sine, and cosine, and using uh, those trig functions to find unknown angles and sides. So this is a review. So let's get started. For number one, find the value of each variable. So we're going to find x. Well, this is a 45-45-90 uh, triangle. So the pattern goes, uh, it goes leg, leg, and then leg radical 2. So if 8 is the uh, leg, then x is going to equal 8 radical 2. All right, uh, number two, the pattern for a 30, 60, 90 triangle it goes like this. It goes short. I'll just use S for the short leg. And uh, the hypotenuse is two times the short leg. And uh, the um, long leg is equal to the short leg times radical three. So the short leg times radical 3 is going to equal this long leg. So you always have to start with the number that you have, this 3 radical 3. So um, I can solve this for the short leg by dividing both sides by radical 3. Now I can tell right now, even without a calculator, uh, if I divide by radical 3 on both sides, uh, look, bo both these radical 3's are going to cancel out. So that leaves me with the short leg equaling 3. Okay, so that tells me that the short leg is 3, um, which means that is going to come in here. Okay, so this is going to be 2 times 3. So that's why y is 6. Okay, so right there, y is going to equal 6. Um, Oh, I guess that was the only variable, so y is 6. Okay, over here. All right, the pattern goes leg, leg, and then leg, root 2. Okay, so apparently the leg is 5 radical 2. So if I substitute 5 radical 2 for the leg, then this is going to become, you know, so if I'm, I'm putting the 5 radical 2 right here, then this will become 5 radical 2 radical 2. Okay, and that uh, is 10. All right, you can put that in your calculator, or you can realize that radical 2 times radical 2 is 2, and 2 times 5 is 10. All right, number 4. Number four, again, the pattern is short, okay, that's your, your short leg, and uh, the hypotenuse is two times the short leg, and the long leg is the short leg times radical three. Um, I feel like we just did this problem a second ago. If I divide both sides by radical three, I will find the short leg. So this tells me that the short leg is 2. Okay, so that means, um, so since the short leg is 2, that means x is 2. Okay, and since the short leg is 2, okay, because here we found that the short leg was equal to 2, if I substitute that in right there, then that's going to give me that y is equal to 4. Okay, looking at number 5. Alright, the pattern was leg, leg, and leg root 2. Um, well, if I wanted to solve this for leg, of course I would divide both sides by radical 2. Once again, these radical 2's cancel out. 
And that tells me that the leg is 4, which means that x uh, being the leg, x e equals 4. OK? So x is 4. Um, number 6, the pattern goes. All right? Um, this is the short leg, because it's across from the 30. And then the uh, hypotenuse here should be double the short leg. And uh, if I needed it, the long leg over here would be the short leg times radical 3. But anyway, since the short leg is 12, um, I could just uh, put that in. So that's going to give me that x is equal to 24. Okay, because 2 times 12. All right, that's pretty straightforward, I suppose, at this point. Now, this is one of those problems that my students very, very, very often get wrong. Please pay attention to the fact that sometimes I ask you to find the measure of the angle, and then sometimes I don't. So if I, if I just say find the tangent of A, then you find the tangent of A and stop. Um, but it looks like for this problem, I ask you to find, I ask you to do both. Okay, so we're going to find tangent A and tangent B. So, all right, tangent of A is opposite over adjacent, so that's 8 over 6. All right, we're supposed to make that a decimal. All right, so that's, um, does it say four decimal places? Four decimal places. So that's going to be one point, and then it's like three repeating. So this is 1.3333. So that's one answer, because that's the tangent of A. Um, we're also supposed to do the tangent of B. So the tangent of B opposite over adjacent, that's 6 over 8. Okay, so that's 0 0.75. Okay, I, guess I could add some zeros on to the end of there, but what's the point, right? Um, so, please understand that if I did not ask you to find the measure of the angle, I would just stop here and these would be my answers. Um, but in addition, they did say they wanted me to find the measure of angle A and the measure of angle B. But that's sort of like a whole different problem. So understand this. Angle A, of course, to find the angle, we will do the inverse trig function. And I will go back to my 8 over 6, or I could have done 4 over 3. Do not use the rounded decimal. Use the exact value. So anyway, that's going to give me... Inverse tangent, 8 over 6, 53.1 degrees. And angle B will equal the inverse tangent of 6 over 8. That's 36.9 degrees. Okay, so that is what you do when I ask you to find the measure of the angle. And only when I ask you to find the measure of the angle are you going to do that. If I, don't, if I just say find the tangent, stop here like I did on the left. Okay. Okay, find the sine of R, the sine of S cosine of r and the cosine of x. Okay. All right, so let's get organized. So this will be uh, this row will be for uh, angle s. This row will be for angle r. Um, this column will be for sine and this column will be for cosine. So, the sine of angle s Sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, so 42 over 58.
Okay, I guess I was supposed to write that as a decimal. Um, I guess I'll do that next. Um, and then uh, sine of angle R, that would be 40 over 58. And then cosine of S, adjacent over hypotenuse, that would be 40 over 58. And uh, the cosine of angle R is going to be 42 over 58. Okay, and so that's the sine and cosine of those two angles. And it says write each answer as a decimal rounded to four decimal places. In decimal form, uh, they would look like this. Um, we're also supposed to find angle S and angle R themselves. Um, so this is what you would get. I could have used uh, sine or cosine, but I just went ahead and used sine. So if I want to find the actual angle, that's when I will do the inverse trig function. So inverse sine will, gives me 46.4 uh, degrees for angle S and 43.6 degrees for angle R. Moving on. Okay, so number 13. Okay, so now uh, we're going to find these variables. It says sine or cosine, but um, feel free to use tangent as well. Use your common sense. Okay, so say if I want to find a T, and of course I need to use my 51 degrees and my 32. Which trig function am I, am I about to do? Well, this is opposite in hypotenuse. That is the sine function. So I would do sine 51 is equal to t over 32. To solve this, I will just multiply both sides by 32. Whoops. All right, those cancel out. So that leaves me with t equals 32 sine 51 which is 24.9. Okay, so that's T. Um, now, if I want to find U, what will I do? So if I'm trying to get U, U is the adjacent leg, so that's going to be cosine function. So I will go cosine 51 is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's U over 32. Again, if I want to get this u by itself, I will multiply by 32 on both sides. So that is going to get me u equals 32 cosine 51. That's 20.1. All right, that's number 13. Number 14, if I want to find x, so there's x, I'm going to use the 12, I'm going to use the 47, which trig function am I about to do? Um, this is adjacent and hypotenuse, so that's about to be the cosine function. So I'm going to do cosine 47 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Once again, I will multiply to get this variable by itself. Those cancel out. That's going to leave me with x equals 12 cosine 47, which is 8.2. So that's x. All right. Now, if I want to get uh, y, then now suddenly I'm looking at opposite and hypotenuse. So that's all about the sine function. So I'm going to go sine 47 is equal to y over 12. Then I will multiply once again to get that y by itself. So that's going to give me y equals 12 sine 47 or 8.8. .8.
Number 15. Let's say if I want to find a G. So if I want to find G, and of course I have to use the 39 and the 44. Well, that's all about adjacent and hypotenuse, so that's the cosine function. So I will do cosine 39 is equal to 44 over G. Um, when the variable is in the denominator, I reverse in this way. So that's going to give me G is equal to 44 over cosine 39, which means G is equal to let's see, 44 over cosine 39. That's 56.6. All right, now, say if I want to find H instead. Okay, now I'm dealing with opposite and adjacent. Well, that's the tangent function. So let's go ahead and do that, if you please. So the tangent function. So I'm talking about tangent of 39 is equal to H over 44, opposite over adjacent. Um, once again, we will multiply to make this happen. So multiply by 44 on both sides. That's going to give me h equals 44 tangent 39, which is 35.6. Okay, so that's number 15. All right, uh, let's see what's next. All right, then it goes straight to number 19. So the space shuttle, when the space shuttle is six miles from the runway, okay, and right here it says distance to the runway. Okay, so um, this must be our six down here since that says distance to the runway. Um, its glide angle is about 21 degrees. Okay, so this is our 21 degrees right in here. Find the shuttle's altitude at this point. Um, and of course, here's the altitude over here, which we can call x. So looking at the x and the 6, that's opposite uh, and adjacent. So it looks like we're about to do the tangent function. So we could do tangent of 21 is equal to x over 6. If we solve this, this will give us our altitude. And we will solve it by multiplying both sides by 6. The 6s are going to cancel out. So that tells us that the altitude x is 6 tangent 21, which is 2.3. Okay, so these are miles, so, um, so 2.3 miles is the answer to number 19. Number 20, solve the right triangle. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. That's one decimal place. Um, solving the right triangle means finding all unknown sides and angles. Um, let's see. Let me let's start with the angles. Say if I want to find angle N. Okay. If I want to find angle N, then I'm focusing on angle N, and of course I have to use my two numbers. Well, these are opposite and adjacent from angle N. So that would mean we're going to use the tangent function. So to start off, I'm going to do the tangent of angle N is equal to 24 over 34. Of course, if I want to find an actual angle, that's when I do inverse trig functions. In this case, inverse tangent. Okay, so inverse tangent of 24 
over 34. That's 35.2 degrees. Okay, so that, my friend, is angle N. Now, if I wanted to find angle P, I could subtract from 90, um, but there's a risk in that in case I made a mistake on angle N. So I'm going to find it from scratch, from the beginning. This is still opposite and adjacent, <clears throat> but it's sort of upside down from the way it was before. So I'm still going to do tangent, but so when I do the tangent of P, opposite and adjacent will be 34 over 24. I still will do the inverse tangent to find the angle, of course, which means that um, angle P is going to be it's the inverse tangent of 34 over 24. That's 54.8 degrees. All right, so now I've got these two angles. I'm not going to use either one of these angles to find the unknown side, which we also need. If I have the two sides given, uh, I'm sh I should use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. So that is what I shall do. So I'm going to go, um, see, I'm, so I'm trying to find this now. So x squared, you know, c squared should equal a squared plus b squared. If I want to solve this, I need to take the square root of both sides. All right, now I personally like to put this whole thing in my calculator just the way it is. So that's 41.6. So that means PN is 41.6. Okay, PN being that side. So I found the three things. So you're always finding three things when you solve a triangle. So let's do that again. Solving this triangle means finding three things. It's practically the same problem uh, as before. So if I want to find a G, I'm looking at G and the 14 and the 10. This is the cosine function. So I'm going to go cosine of G is equal to um, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 10 over 14. That means g is going to equal the inverse cosine of 10 over 14. So let's see, inverse cosine of 10 over 14. That's 44.4 degrees. OK, so that's angle g. All right, if I want to find um, angle E instead, um, now that's opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be the sine function. So I'm going to go sine E is equal to 10 over 14. OK, it's still 10 over 14. Um, but E will equal the inverse sine of 10 over 14. So E is going to equal, let's see, inverse sine of 10 over 14. That's 45.6 degrees. All right, so that's E. Um, again, if I want to find this side, Fe, throw an x on there, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say, um, let's see, I'm going to be very careful. 10 squared plus x squared is equal to 14 squared. Okay, notice the hypotenuse has to go by itself. Then I need to subtract 10 squared from both sides. So that's going to give me x squared is equal to 14 squared minus 10 squared. 
Then it's time to take the square root of both sides. And I like to do that all in my calculator just like this. And that is 9.8. Okay, so that's uh so that means Fe is 9.8. All right, so we solved the triangle. We found the three things. Okay. All right, that leaves one problem, but I'll have to pause and do this in a second because I have students coming in. To be continued. All right, I'm out of time, but um, here's the solution to number 22. First, I found angle G by doing the, uh, um, the inverse sign of 15 over 17, that should be 61.9. Then I found angle H by doing the inverse cosine of uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, 15 over 17. So angle H turned out to be 28.1 degrees. And then I found side uh, GI here by doing the Pythagorean theorem. And I got eight. Okay, that is the end of the lesson.